Hello there and welcome to Silverstone here in Northamptonshire for rounds 15 and 16 of the British Formula 3 International Series. Now with only six races left, we really are at the sharp end of the competition and for any driver who has title aspirations, it's time now to show their hand. The 2.2 mile international circuit still has many of the elements of the Grand Prix track and is equally as challenging. It's a, it's a great track, uh, it's not as good as G the GP track. It's got every different type of corner possible and it has got a few little hills on it under the bridge and stuff like that. First corner is uh, flat on the new tyres. It's quite exciting to, to race here, yeah. Two weeks ago at Spa in Belgium, we saw a couple of very interesting races, not least because of the very unpredictable Ardennes weather. Race one proved a sunny affair, and for Daniel Ricciardo, it was a very rewarding day. He took pole position and went on to claim his fourth win of the year. In race two, though, the weather gods decided to spice things up, and when the race did get underway, it was dry, but not for long. A heavy shower quickly saw some drivers dive into the pits to change from slicks, but wet weather tyres proved to be the wrong decision. In the end, though, it was Adriana Bazaid who managed to hang on and claim his first ever Formula 3 win. First Formula 3 win you're never, you're never going to forget, so it's pretty good. Really happy for the team, that was the second win for the team for the year. And I'm really looking forward for Sirius now, because it was a great weekend, so now we need to keep working and keep looking forward and, and just uh, try to make it better. Another driver who has shown that he has the pace is Carlos Huertas. The young Colombian has really improved over the last few rounds and could soon be knocking on the door of a podium. Uh, the beginning was quite difficult. Uh, the first two races I struggled with qualifying. Then I got better and better all the time. Uh, and then I, got a, I had a big improvement in Donington Park when I was the fourth in both races. In Spa, I think I should have had two podiums, but uh, for, uh, for different reasons. So, Daniel Ricciardo now has an impressive 37-point lead, but there are still 126 points available, so he's far from home and dry yet. Back in May, the two races on the Grand Prix circuit were by far the best races of the year for Max Chilton, claiming two poles and two podiums. However, that first win has proved elusive, but could this be his weekend? The year hasn't gone as well as planned, uh, but we've still been very quick. We've had poles, we've had podiums, um, we just need to get the win. So for round 15 here at Silverstone, it's Carlin's Daniel Ricciardo on pole position. Alongside him is his teammate Max Chilton. Now it's going to be quite a dash into that first corner. So here's Martin. This is the starting lineup for round 15 of the Cooper Tires British Formula 3 International Series with our points leader Daniel Ricciardo on pole position ahead of Max Chilton, the man who took both poles at Silverstone back in May. It's an all high tech row two. Renga van der Zander returns to the scene of his first F3 victory in Great Britain, just out qualifying teammate Walter Grubmuller. Carlos Huertas and Henry Arundel make up row three of the grid, and Wayne Boyd starts in seventh ahead of Ricky Christodoulou. Rounding out the top ten, Daisuke Nakajima and a slightly disappointed Adriano Putzaid and Gabriel Diaz is our national class pole sitter. It's a bright and sunny day at Silverstone, little blustery perhaps, how's that going to affect their form? Well, Danny Ricciardo right back on his very best, a win and second last time out in Spa, one here earlier in the year, really very much the man to beat, sitting on pole position with teammates Max Chilton alongside. Revs rise, it's a long hold away they go, good start from the leader. Oh, slow away from Max Chilton, very good start from Gabriel Diaz, flashing through the shot there in the national class. Chilton's down to third, Grubbola goes by him, Chilton is down to fourth place. From the outside the front row of the grid, Daniel Ricciardo leads from Renga van der Zender, looking back from Daisuke Nakajima. That's Adriana Pizzai in 10th place, there's Diaz, the national class leader in 11th, good start from 14th on the grid for him. Ricardo and van der Zander very close, van der Zander slides there, got in very close to the race leader under braking, bit of a mistake, everybody else just about squeezing through safely, Island Benz first time round, always a bit of a bottleneck, rushing down towards Abbey, Chilton closing fast, 
Here we go around the outside of Grubmuller. Well, this is going to be a hard job for Max Chilton. Grubmuller has got the inside line much shorter, and he can drift out to his left to take the line of the curves as he does. So that leaves Max in fourth place, but with Henry Anvil right behind him. Third, fourth, and fifth together. Huertas, the blue car on his own in sixth. Then the battle for seventh. Wayne Boyd just ahead of Ricky Christodoulou and Daisuke Nakajima. We ride on board with him right in front of the very disappointing Agiano Besides. So quick at Spa, so off the pace here at Silverstone. Well, there is Walter Grubmuller still hanging on to third place ahead of Max Chilton, who must be ruining that slow start of his. Victor Garcia there just ahead of Danny McKenzie, the other red and white car, the national class points leader. Across the line then comes Daniel Ricciardo, pulling away from Renga van der Zander. Both of them won here at Silverstone earlier in the season. Grubmuller third from Chilton and Arundel. Carlos Huertas a little lonely on his own. And there is the second man in the national class, Daniel McKenzie. Well, just in front of him, the battle for ninth place. There's the Raikkonen and Robertson team wondering what they can do for Daisuke Nakajima. Not an awful lot. He qualified ninth. He is ninth ahead of that car, the qualified tenth of Agiano Pizzaid. And those two stuck firmly where they were in qualifying around eight tenths away from front running pace. Right behind them is the national class race leader, Gabriel Diaz. And there, Walter Grubel are now starting to pull away from Max Chilton. Third and fourth place battle. Max grabbing a little bit of extra curb there on the inside. Oh, and contact! Philip Major and Howell Lloyd, the Welsh driver, bouncing up in the air. And the Canadian seems to have uh, pulled off on the other side of the circuit. Well, that is an Abbey. So a classic coming together. Now, will they need a safety car? Daniel Ricciardo's lead will be eroded substantially if they do. He's continuing just to ease away from Renga van der Zander. Walter Grubmuller and Max Chilton battling for third, ahead of Henry Arundel, who's drifting away from them a little. On board with Max. Nice wide line out of Cops. Cresting the rise here into Maggots and then sweeping fast right into Beckett's. There's Howell Lloyd's car. Let's have a look at what happened down at Abbey. Well, Major's inside, they bang wheels. Major's trying to go for the kerb on the exit. Lloyd's there, though, still alongside. And it looked initially as if Major had gone into the back of Lloyd, but in fact, the back of Lloyd went across the front of Major. Well, misjudgment by both men, no harm done, although they are both spectators from the sidelines. Two relative newcomers to the championship. This is Kevin Chen of Chinese Taipei chasing Michele Facin, making his debut here at Silverstone for Team West Tech. The Italian just holding off the double R racer, but only just. May see them in next year's championship, perhaps. Now then, problems perhaps for Renga van der Zander. He's dropped way back from Daniel Ricciardo, the race leader, and he looks as though he might be struggling, checking the mirrors there. Now, has he got a problem or is he waiting for his teammate? Walter Grubmuller, second in the championship. Renga van der Zander is third. There's Bruce Jenkins of the high-tech team running both cars, of course. And uh, it has been suggested by Carlin that they have used team tactics to move Grubmuller up the order, and that may be exactly what we've just seen. Of course, if van der Zander's car does not speed up again, then we will retract that, but it does look as though he is speeding up again. Yes, he is. He stays in front of Max Chilton, does not head to the pit lane, and Chilton's going, come on, what are you doing? Are you slow or not? No, he's not. Max has just found out exactly what the Carlin team have found out as well, that van der Zander has fallen on a grenade to allow his teammate to go through. Well, he slowed down enough to allow Grubmuller to close, but only when it was safe to do so, only when Walter had pulled away sufficiently from Max Chilton. Job done, no dramas. Last lap for Gabriel Diaz. Out of Beckett's for the final time through the island bends. He's heading to win number five of the season in round 16, and he's not alone. Win number five coming up also for Daniel Ricciardo. Winner at Silverstone in May, winner at Silverstone in August as well. The championship leader extends his advantage. He's got fastest lap of the race as well as he takes the chequered flag, claiming victory comfortably in front of Walter Grummuller and Gabriel Diaz equally comfortable the national class winner. Confirmation, national class winner Gabriel Diaz and the podium. Renga van der Zander chasing Walter Grubmuller, but Daniel Ricciardo in a class of his own at Silverstone.
Daniel, many congratulations. Your, your fifth win. Um, great for the championship. Yeah, it was um, you know a great great way to start the day, and you know for the championship it's good you know to get the win in a faster slaps the the best way to do it, and um, you know from the start just uh, just managed to pull a gap, and the car was really consistent throughout the race, and um, you know a bit of traffic at the end sort of I guess slowed me down a bit, but by that stage the gap was there, so that's all I needed to do, and yeah, really pleased. So congratulations to Daniel Ricciardo. Another stunning drive here in the sun at Silverstone. We'll have round 16 for you after the break. So for round 16 here at Silverstone, after a very hectic qualifying session, we've got a new face at the front. Daisuke Nakajima takes his first ever Formula 3 pole position. Here's Martin. It's how they line up then for round 16 of the Cooper Tires British Formula 3 International Series. Daisuke Nakajima, the first Japanese driver on pole position for a very long while in British F3. Max Chilton again lines up second ahead of Renga van der Zander. And Daniel Ricciardo in fourth place just ahead of Walter Grubmuller. That should be interesting. Henry Arundel is sixth ahead of Wayne Boyd and Carlos Huertas, with Ricky Christodoulou ninth from Philip Major in the top ten. National class pole sitter again is Gabriel Diaz. This time, he starts in twelfth. What a chance then for Daisuke Nakajima to claim his first British Formula 3 win. Pole position at a dry and warm Silverstone. Oh, Max Negarev coming into the pit lane, the Russian driver with problems. Not a good weekend for him already. So then Nakajima sits on pole. Good start. Away he goes. Good start from Chilton as well. And Gabriel Diaz, yes, past four cars already before he gets to the start line. What a flyer. Looking back from Nakajima, there's Chilton. Renga van der Zander is in third place. And Walter Grummeler got by Daniel Ricciardo for fourth as the rest of them sweep through Cops. Two and three wide, wide and fast, but not wide enough for Wayne Boyd. Look at the lead that Nakajima's got already. Chilton holding off van der Zander. Then Grummeler, Ricciardo, the yellow car, Wayne Boyd. Tight on the inside, Arundel goes off, trying to defend, and he's going to lose two places. Wow, Quetas around the outside, Christodoulou around the inside, so Arundel has lost three positions already. Danny Ricciardo with the yellow nose, oh, locks up, he was on the grass under braking, trying to go around the outside of Grubmuller on cold tyres. There's Gabriel Diaz alongside Howell Lloyd, and they avoid each other. Max Chilton in second place. And like race leader Daisuke Nakajima, yet to win in British F3. We've had eight different winners in 15 starts so far this season. So the wins have been spread around. Maybe they'll spread around the top two. A little further back, there's Jay Bridger on the right. And all lunging from behind, Victor Correa. National class driver clumps into Jay Bridger. The light speed turns the Megal around. Nakajima pulling away. And Walter Grubmuller in fourth place, holding off Daniel Ricciardo at the moment as the lead trio escape. Nakajima, Chilton, van der Zander, and there is the yellow nose of Ricciardo showing on the inside of Grubmuller, but more in hope than anticipation. He goes very wide, as did van der Zander in front. And they're going to try and recover Jay Bridges' Miguel, who's got the engine fired as well. Run away, lads. This is how it happened. Victor Correa, very overambitious here, really. The tiniest of touches in the end, just enough to turn the unsettled Miguel around on itself. Taking a look at the battle for sixth, Wayne Boyd, the yellow car, is sixth. Ricky Christodoulou here is in eighth place in car number 51. Between them, Carlos Huertas rushing down towards Abbey. And Huertas looking inside, oh, I think he's caught Boyd by surprise, he has, goes a little deep through, goes Christodoulou as Boyd's first off line, and right behind is Henry Arundel. Boyd's already lost two places in that one corner, and he's defending deep on the inside, but Arundel's got a good run on him, oh, great stuff out of bridge, lunging to the inside, into Priory, he's got him. And that should be enough to hang on. Yes, trips out wide. Wayne Boyd with two wheels on the dirt on the exit. Couldn't hold on. Three places down in three corners. And he's got Victor Garcia closing in from behind as well. So the damage may not have ended for the young Ulsterman. Here's the battle for fourth place then. And again, Danny Ricciardo launching an attack. Here he comes down the inside, right under the nose of Bruce Jenkins on the high-tech pit wall. But Grumble is sticking to his guns around the outside. Takes a long line, big slide from him as well. But as he gathers it up on full throttle, he's still just got his nose in front. And Ricciardo's not going to get it done. No, he's not. 
fantastic fight back there. Really looked for a moment as if Grubmuller was tucked up like a kipper, but Ricardo just could not put the move home. Well, fantastic stuff, and Bruce Jenkins' boy holds on in fourth place. Grubmuller really fighting here. Ricardo trying to go around the outside, but middle and leg, good defence by Walter Grubmuller. The Austrian again holding off the Australian, and right behind, the train is closing. We're at the back of it. In the guard van with Henry Arundel in eighth place, Ricky Christodoulou in seventh, and towing us along, Carlos Huertas, the blue and white car, sixth position. Ooh, just trying to turn in a fraction early, very aggressive driving from Henry Arundel, really chasing hard, closing on Christodoulou through this tight and twisty stadium complex. And a long wait, second apex at Luffield, now on the gas, excellent. Drive off there, chasing this battle. Once more, Danny Ricardo. is he going to have a look? I don't think he's close enough, and I'm sure the high-tech boys don't think he is either. No, not quite, but he's certainly not letting Grubmuller relax. He drifts out wide. Oh, goodness me, Wayne Boyd almost going off there. And there is the battle for the lead. Double R's, Daisuke Nakajima leading. There's his team as he comes under challenge from Max Chilton. Chilton has a lunge. Nakajima fends him off. Chilton's going alongside again. He's going around the outside. Nakajima makes a mistake. Renga van der Zander in the black car is right there as well. This could go three wide into bridge. Chilton on the inside. Nakajima's lost. No, he's not. He's coming back underneath him under braking into Priory. He holds the lead. Chilton having a looking down into Brooklyn's. No, can't get through there. And van der Zander drives around the outside, big slide from Chilton, he's gone. Van der Zander's up into second, Chilton out to third. Wow, fantastic stuff, and right behind is Daniel Ricciardo, who's close right in on this group after getting ahead of Walter Grobmuller. So, suddenly it's all changed. Nakajima with the hunting machine that is Renga van der Zander right behind him. Van der Zander's car wobbles a little out of cops, but look how wide Chilton has to go to keep the pace, and he drops back a fraction as well. High summer, high tension here at Silverstone. Nakajima trying to cling on to this potential for a first win in British F3. Less than half distance to go, but van der Zander's not going to need the rest of the race. He might not even need the rest of the lap. He's having a go around the outside of Abbey. He's really forcing the issue. Nakajima can't use the full width of the road. He's slow in, and van der Zander's going to take the lead, or is he? They touch wheels. Van der Zander's still on the outside. Nakajima on the inside where Chilton was last lap, and the same result. The man on the outside of bridge carries the momentum. Van der Zander leads. Daisuke Nakajima second, Max Chilton third. Fourth now is Daniel Ricciardo with the yellow nose right behind the white and blue car of Max Chilton. And on the back of the group, closing up again, is Walter Grubmuller. Now, this is really important, particularly for Renga van der Zander. He's got in front. There are three cars between him and his teammate. He can't surely be asked to pull over yet. On board with Nakajima, we drift out wide. Chilton's having a look up the inside as they go through Maggots, the left-hander. Nakajima is so strong on defence. Look, he's so fearless. Oh, and Chilton's off. Just had the racing room taken away by the Japanese driver. There was no contact between them, but nowhere to go, and he nearly collects Wayne Boyd as he comes back on. And that puts him down at the bottom of the top ten, I'm afraid, Max. A race that was looking so promising has gone so badly wrong for him. And Nakajima desperately trying to hold on to second place. This time it's Daniel Ricciardo that's taking up the attack. As van der Zander goes away, he's over a second and a half clear. Well, here's that move. Chilton on the outside. On the grass, Nakajima maybe just a fraction out of control. But in the end, Chilton was the loser. Only just avoided contact coming back on as well. Daniel Ricciardo then, now important for the championship, not to let Renga van der Zander get too many points over him. If he can't catch him, the very least that the Australian needs to do is get in front of Daisuke Nakajima to take second place and hopefully keep Nakajima between him and Grubmuller, his closest rival. Van der Zander is checking out and Grubmuller at the back of this group, 
Can't ask any assistance from his teammate. It's down to the Austrian to see what he can do. Danny Ricardo looking again at the inside. But Daisuke Nakajima having none of it, not allowing himself to be phased. He won't worry until the Australian is actively alongside him, not thinking about it. Meanwhile, Carlos Huertas with Ricky Christodoulou. This is for fifth place now, don't forget. Henry Arundel and right behind them, as Arundel checks the mirrors, is the recovering Max Chilton. Oh, Ricky Christodoulou having a look, and Chilton goes around the outside of Arundel, who locks up on the inside and takes away Max's racing room. Chilton with Wayne Boyd behind him, but I think that Wayne may well be coming by. Well, tense times for the high-tech team. Renga van der Zander out front, and the last lap completed. He's going to be, well, the better part of a dozen seconds in front, over 11-second lead coming on to this last lap over Daisuke Nakajima. So a stunning performance here in half the race. He has opened up an 11-second lead. One here for the first time in British F3 earlier in the season, and he is going to win again. It'll be Renga van der Zander's third British Formula 3 win, and it could not come at a more critical time with just four races remaining. Victor Correa's light speed won't hinder him as he takes the chequered flag, wins round number 16 by a country mile. Well, there is Danny Ricardo in third place ahead of Walter Grubmuller. Daisuke Nakajima taking second position. And behind them, Huertas and the rest, everybody close at the line. In the national class, no contest. It's win number six of the season for Gabriel Diaz as he keeps his championship hopes alive. Double success for Gabriel Diaz in the national class. Danny Ricardo third. Daisuke Nakajima could have, should have, but didn't as Renga van der Zander romped away to win number three. The, the start wasn't great, it was a normal start, so I kept the third place. And then I was, uh, was just waiting for them to fight because I hadn't really the pace in the beginning. And then uh, I overtook Chilton on the outside, I overtook uh, Nakajima on, on the outside. A bit of wheel banging and then was off, so uh, it was good, very good. Second place is my best result. And, uh, but still, you know, on the first few laps my pace was quite good and I was quick. But after that, I had a small problem in the car, which, which, which wasn't anybody's fault. Well, Diaz could still win the national class title from Daniel McKenzie. For the overall championship, it's a three-horse race. Ricardo, Grubmuller and van der Zander. Winner takes all. Four races remaining. Well, that's it from Silverstone. Another two great races. And congratulations once again to Renga van der Zender. Now, this championship is far from over because next time we'll be heading into Europe to the Algarve in Portugal. Join us for that. Bye-bye. Ahead of an afternoon of racing from Sandown Park and Chester, it's the morning line next on 4.